We don't normally do in the GMS magazine towers, we don't usually do reviews of games and we had definitely never done a prototype before, but I'm gonna make an exception with Duco. This is a game designed by Henrik Larsson from Northern Europe, Sweden, I believe, and I have to say it's probably one of the nicest short quick filler games that I have seen for a very long time that really lives up to the five minutes to learn a lifetime to master. This is just a pre-production copy, but I'm going to show you exactly how it plays and why I like it so much. Welcome to the GMS Magazine review videos. Although normally I don't really review prototypes of games um, because, you know, they're just prototypes and I don't know what they're going to look like at the very end. When I received Duco, I decided to make an exception for various reasons, starting with the fact that the production values, if such thing is possible, are really, really good. These cards look very much finished and the quality of the printing is absolutely fantastic. So I, I thought I'd, I had to have a go at it because I really liked the game. However, as I also have to say, when I received the game, I thought, mm, feel a game, uh, is it gonna suffer from the same lack of replayability and depth that so many filler games out there have? Maybe. And also because it came literally with the motto, five minutes to learn, a lifetime to master. Again, it was a bit, uh, but I did like the looks of it. Uh, Henrik Larsen, the, the designer, made an effort to, to actually send the game to me and I couldn't let him down. So I thought, right, let's, let's play. Let's see if it really takes five minutes. Uh, before we go into the rules, which we are going to review, or I'm going to review in no time, let me give you a rundown as to what this game is all about. Uh, the game is square cards. The rules so far comes in these six cards. Uh, double-sided, okay, and in these cards you have all the rules and several variations, it's a difficult word for me, variations of the game to play. I don't know if in the final production of the game, which will be available at Essen at Spiel this year, will be the same or not, but I like it. It's okay uh, and it reduces production costs because it means that you don't have to be doing layout for a piece of paper, printing the paper, folding, what have you. So, so far, so good. I like the rules. The cards, thickish, could do with being a little bit thicker, but thick enough. I like them, it's all right. The back of the cards is just the logo of the game in four very bright colors. The reason why I like the logo is because it's very unpretentious, but also with the very bright colors, it's very good for children who will be attracted to the, to the bright, uh, colorful duco, very easy to read uh, words to it. And this is a fantastic game for children. In the front, we have several shapes. These shapes are the squares, triangles, circles, crescent moons, stars and you have special icons. The objective of the game is in a cross laid out on the table like this, you have to place these cards and match color and or shape. If you match the color, you get one point. If you match color and shape, you get two points. There are some special icons. For example, you have this times two on this moon, and you have this mix of shapes. That, it does exactly it. It doubles the number of points. So if you match this moon with another red shape, you get two points. If you match this moon with another red moon, then you get four points. This mix of shapes, you can match any shape with it and you will get one point and you can match any green color regardless of the shape and you will get two points. 
And this will match any color. So any other square of any color will give you two points. Any triangle, for example, of any color match with this will give you one point. So you can play a little bit with how these are meant to be working. For example, if I placed this card, say, I don't know, here, I will be getting two points because I'm, ma I'm matching the, the crescent. I would be getting one point because this counts as a square and that counts as any color, so that would be another two points, another point, so that would be two points in here. And this two, because there are two circles, I would be getting one point, because the colors don't match. So that would be two, three, four, five points in one move. The first player to reach 50 points, or 75 points, or 100, or however many you want, but 50 points is a good one to start with, and is the official version. That's the winner. When you're reaching the end, and you're creating a whole rectangle of cards, then you just put more cards on the sides and keep going. That's the game. It is not without its flaws, though, and it's one thing that has to be kept into account. If you're playing a four-player's game, which I have done, when you are the last player in the round, if well, you would probably have just one place to put your card. This is just randomly, so don't judge my points on this one, please. I'm just completing this to give you a perfect idea as to what, what I mean. So, if you are the last player, then you will only have one space to put your card. If you're very lucky and, and you get a reasonably good card, great. But if not, you won't be getting that many points. Having said that, that can be very easily sorted out, because by the time that you reach... Uh, yes. This stage of the game, you can start placing more cards to the sides and give a little bit more options. That's the basic game. It, there really is next to nothing to it. Uh, one more thing that the game has, although it doesn't count as an official rule, I would very, very much encourage you to have it as an official rule and set a limit to the time you can spend thinking where to put the cards. This game is very, very dangerous for people with analysis paralysis. Trust me. I know. It's painful. Having the 30 seconds rule, it allows you not just to make sure that the game is not going to go on forever, which it could, uh, but also, it, it has a little bit element of an excitement, you know, the game, is, <laughs> damn it, the time is finishing, I'm there, and see what happens. It really works for me, it works really, really well. So that's one thing that I would suggest. Uh, the game and the rules also come with several variations, but even if they come with variations, one thing that you can do very easily is to come up with your own, which is absolutely brilliant. For example, variations in the game that come in the rules is drafting. Instead of just drawing one card and placing it, which is the normal game, you draw three cards and then you have to decide which one to put. That gives you a little bit more time while the other players are considering their options to think your strategy. You can also play, so if you have more than one logo of the same color, that will also give you some extra points. And the more that you put in a row, the more points that you would be getting. You can play solo by setting a number, how many points can you get in a number of, of, of cards laid on the table. Obviously, the, the higher the score, the better. You can play in a three by three uh, kind of um, grid and move a row to place a card. You can play, so you place a card and then rotate another by 90 degrees to give you a little bit more icons so on and so forth. So it does have a huge amount of replayability and 
I can see myself coming up with my own variations of the game. I can see anyone coming with their own variations of the game. For children, it's brilliant because the bright colors will be very attractive and the basic arithmetics will keep them counting and will keep their minds working a little bit. It may not be the best for that and there might be some better games out there, but this certainly is a winner from that point of view because it is so accessible. And as an adult, I can tell you that the challenge of finding the right place to put your card is really entertaining, is really very, very amusing. Overall, I would rate this game really highly. And if the production values when it's printed out, and I have no reason to doubt that they will be brilliant, are as good as they are now, this should be in any child's collection and any casual gamer's ludo. Mr. Larson, absolutely fantastic design. Well done, sir.